the most excited I've ever been for a microphone firmware update. I don't make videos on every little software update that comes to accessories like microphones, but this one is kind of a big deal and it's something I've been begging the folks at Rode since the launch of the Rode Wireless Go 2. Now you might have seen these little black boxes stuck to my t-shirt. These little wireless microphones have basically taken over my entire video content creation strategy. They are so fast to use. They get microphones on your subject, so you're not messing with microphones on your camera because that's not always the best audio. And these were the first to offer up one critical feature. This is a microphone with a transmitter. This is a receiver. But if the wireless signal between these two gets interrupted, you get a lot of dropouts and degradation in your audio recording. The Rode Wireless Go 2 were the first to introduce safety recording on the transmitter. So a backup of your recording is saved on this and you can transfer it in case the wireless signal degrades. This is a huge peace of mind feature to have on prosumer kit like this. But there was one critical flaw to this. Any audio data saved on the transmitter was sort of stored in this proprietary container format that you needed Rode software to transfer over. You'd have to plug this into a PC and the mobile apps like the Android apps couldn't read the data on the transmitter. Recently, we've seen this trick employed on a few other players like the DJI wireless microphones, and I just did a video on this. This is the Saramonic Blink. The Blink Me have kind of the same trick. The transmitter will store audio locally, and then you can plug it into the receiver, then plug a USB-C cable into a computer, and you can transfer directly off of the transmitter. I think you might see where I'm going with this firmware update. Rode just updated the Wireless Go 2. Now they've changed the file structure. They've changed the recording format on the transmitter, so you no longer need a Rode app to transfer the audio over. I've only updated one of the transmitters. I actually got to look at the back. Okay, this one has not been updated, and this one has. So I've got my Windows 11 tablet right here. This is my Robo and Kala, and we're gonna plug each one in just so we can take a look at how it's different now. I don't have any Rode software installed on this, so we're gonna take this first one. Actually, here, let me pull up my File Explorer. You can kind of see the, the main Windows storage. We're gonna plug in the older firmware. We're gonna hear, yeah, there's the little bling, and nothing else is happening, but I am charging. So you can charge a Rode Wireless Go 2 off of a Windows PC. If, why this is critical is because when you're working in kind of a mixed computer and camera environment, as a former production nerd, I always felt it was helpful to be able to back up to other systems. I'd be on a shoot, I'd have a memory card, I could hand it to someone who was copying the camera footage, and we always knew that there was like another copy of that recording in existence. If you really need to depend on the production of that stuff, having copies and backups is super critical to your workflow in case something goes bork. So now here's the one with the updated firmware. Again, there's no Rode software on here, but we're gonna plug this in. We hear the little bleep, and a USB drive has appeared, and a folder has opened, and in this folder, are a series of WAV files, .wav, uncompressed audio, ready for the taking. Playing around with this now, we can kind of see why Rode was making people go through that proprietary program. We've got a series of recordings here, but this was actually one continuous podcast. It's broken up into these roughly 24 minute chunks. Now, if you stitch them all together in an audio editing app, it's a completely continuous, unbroken, there's no gaps, there's no problem with the audio, but how the transmitter is buffering, storing and saving, it seems to be limited to about 24 minutes of wave audio. It makes working with this audio just a little bit trickier. You've got to kind of organize things manually, but having the access to it without having to depend on one specific computer or an application on another system, I'd much rather have that than not. But now that this is reading just like regular mass storage and we don't have to go through a PC program, is my Pixel 7 Pro. I'm going to take, uh, take the cable here, just plug that in. Let me open up the, oh, oh, I don't know what I just swiped away. <laughs> Probably wasn't very important. I'm gonna pull up my FX file explorer. There's my USB drive. I can open this. Oh, I know it says you can't use this, but I can go over to my side, go to the wireless go. Oh, there are these EGG files, EGG, and now WAV files. So I'm gonna say use this folder. I'm gonna hit allow. And now I've got WAV files that I can pull directly and dump immediately into an audio editing timeline. Right, let's copy one of these off the drive. I'm gonna paste this just into my download folder. The file transfer speeds off these transmitters are a little pokey. Getting a, a, I think this is a roughly 260 megabyte file moved from the transmitter to the phone took roughly 90 seconds. So if you've got hours of footage, 
that's going to take a bit, but I want to see if I pull up audio evolution. Here's my downloaded folder is a big old WAV file. And now I can swipe that. I can move this. And what do I have? I should have roughly, oh, let me go a little bit. Yep, roughly 24 minutes of audio ready to go. This was just a chunk of a podcast that I recorded with TK. I can immediately go into cutting up this audio directly from a mobile device. No other computer needed in the chain of file transfers. From day one of using the Wireless Go 2, I have been pestering the folks at Rode to add this functionality. It makes the Wireless Go 2 even a little bit more useful because there are gonna be situations where you can take just the transmitter out into the field and you don't have to worry about setting up the receiver. And this is kind of the arms race because like I was showing on the Ceremonic Blink Me, while the Blink Me can do something similar, the transmitters cannot be plugged in directly. You always have to carry the receiver to connect the transmitter and plug in the USB-C to pull the files off that way. But it's the kind of stuff that gets me really lit up. It gets me really excited that we can do more with these products and that they have actually improved the functionality of these gadgets over time. So folks, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I would highly recommend checking out some of the reviews and some of my samples and look at any of the videos where you see a little black square on, on my shirt. The Rode Wireless Go 2 have been clutch so far and they're only getting better with these updates. Get the microphones off of your camera and put the mics on your subject. It's gonna do it for me, folks. Thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing. All of the support has been amazing. You guys have been rocking my socks. Those of you catching uh, links down in my video descriptions, hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. These folks are basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet. I stream my podcast on the Twitch. I'm spending a lot more time on the Mastodons, sharing photos on the Flickers, a little less so these days on the Twitters and the Instagrams and the Facebooks. And I will catch you all on the next video.